Here, in the Mitochondrial Research Group at Newcastle University, we study the impact of mitochondria on health and disease. Our goal is to make a difference in the lives of patients who have conditions associated with mitochondrial dysfunction. So what are mitochondria? Well, they are a vital part of nearly all the cells in the human body. They are often called the powerhouses of the cell, meaning, much like batteries, they produce the energy required for the cell to function properly. They are also involved in many other essential aspects of cell endurance and stability. Considering their vital role in the human body, when mitochondria aren't working properly, many different healthcare problems can arise. These can range from specific mitochondrial diseases to playing a role in the development of cancer and also general health problems associated with aging. Despite their significance, not much is known about mitochondria, and learning more about them will help support medical progress, which will lead to improved quality of life for our patients. Investigating such a huge range of medical conditions is an awfully big task, and therefore requires a lot of teamwork. This is what makes our lab unique. There's a strong collaboration between clinical, diagnostic, and scientific research. This provides the ideal opportunity for a multidisciplinary team approach. Our team includes metabolic scientist, geneticist, cell biologist, molecular biologist, neuroscientist, geneticist, geneticist, neuroscientist, neuroscientist, neuroscientist. molecular biologist, lab technician, molecular biologist, summer students, neuroscientist, genetic technologist, clinical scientist, molecular biologist, nurses and doctors. Mathematician. Physiotherapist. We work closely together each day, united by enthusiasm and passion for what we do. Here are just a few of the projects happening in the Mitochondrial Research Group each day. Hi, we're Team PD. We are interested in how poor energy generation and problems with mitochondrial trafficking may cause brain cells to die in Parkinson's disease. We're also interested to know how this might impact on ageing as a whole. It's nice to think that our work has the potential to help people and affect their lives in positive ways. It's also really interesting to watch the mitochondria at work. As we age, the ability of our stem cells to produce energy declines, and so our research is concerned with investigating how this results in impaired regeneration of various tissues with age. As we age, stem cells lose the ability to regenerate new tissue. However, they also increase their ability to form tumours. We study how mitochondria play a role in the, uh, the balance between regeneration and tumour formation. We both work on mitochondrial genetics. We look at how changes to the mitochondrial DNA can affect mitochondrial disease or create health problems as people age. It's great to know that our work could one day directly translate to finding ways to help patients in the clinic. I help organise a database about our patients and the specifics of their mitochondrial disease. This is called a patient cohort study. Our research aims to better understand the neurological deficits that occur in patients with mitochondrial disease. We strive to answer questions such as why are some patients more prone to developing symptoms such as epilepsy and other questions such as why do some patients have problems with motor coordination and balance. We try to understand the fundamental processes leading to neural dysfunction and cell death in the brains of young children through to much older adults. Knowing that the research we do ultimately helps these people drives us to work hard and push the research forward. Currently, there is no way to prevent the transmission of inheritable mitochondrial diseases from one generation to the next. So I'm investigating cutting-edge IVF-based approaches which could help reduce or eliminate the risk of having an infected child with one of these disorders. There are no cures for mitochondrial disease, so my work is looking at novel pharmacological compounds to try and treat these disorders. Using our extensive collection of data provided by patients, I'm producing statistical models to better predict the course of these diseases. We study how exercise training can benefit patients with mitochondrial disease and there's a lot of information in the media about, at the moment about the benefits of exercise, however for our patients it's not quite as straightforward. We hope to give clear and accurate advice about um, the types and how much exercise patients should be doing and then hopefully apply this knowledge to the general population. And as well as we age, reduced muscle mass and function can have a major impact on uh, quality of life. I'm looking at uh, mitochondrial therapeutic interventions um, for slowing down or even potentially reversing this muscle degeneration. So my work involves looking at changes in mitochondrial DNA to see whether these can lead to tumour formation or changes in metabolism. 
I also use these mitochondrial changes to determine the risk for developing cancer and the potential for disease progression. Our lab, the LIDOLERS lab, is primarily a molecular biology lab. What we study is the molecular mechanisms underlying mitochondrial gene expression. This can range from mitochondrial DNA repair to the transcriptional machinery to assembly of the mitochondrial ribosome. And this research is important because by understanding these very basic processes, it directly informs our ability to diagnose, treat, and manage mitochondrial diseases. I work in the mitochondrial diagnostic lab as a clinical scientist, and we are responsible for doing the um, biochemical, histochemical, and molecular genetic analysis on patient samples to try and find what the cause of their clinical symptoms are. We investigate disease patterns and trends and invite patients to join clinical trials to improve standards of care and develop treatments. As you can see, there are many exciting things happening in our research group each day. We are all united together by a common interest in mitochondria and a desire to improve patient quality of life. I think we would all agree that it's a very exciting time to be a mitochondrial researcher.